Right. Okay, so uh, I finished uh, my series of lectures yesterday on uh, uh, the uh, quasi steady effect of, of the curvature of the detonation on uh, the uh, direct direct initiation of detonation. And uh, uh, this analysis give produce a velocity of the, uh, of the curve uh, detonation uh, uh, versus the radius <coughs> uh, with a turning point, okay? Therefore, there is no more, uh, uh, no solution for radius smaller than the critical radius. It turns out that this critical radius is in good agreement uh, concerning the order of magnitude uh, for uh, determine, determine, determining uh, the critical energy. The problem is that this quasi-steady state approximation for of the inner structure of the reaction wave, the uh, reaction wave of the detonation wave uh, <coughs> is not a good uh, approximation uh, uh, considering uh, why it doesn't work. Something doesn't work. Why it doesn't work? Okay. Uh, uh, because uh, when you uh, compare the result of the quasi-steady approximation with the direct initiation, a direct uh, uh, numerical result of the direct initiation, you see uh, that the direct, the numerical result shows strong unsteadiness of the trajectory near criticality. So, uh, uh, in order to, uh, to study this problem, we have performed uh, relatively re recently uh, an asymptotic analysis in the limit of small heat release, including the curvature and the unsteadiness of uh, uh, the, uh, the, the detonation. The detonation. Uh, so therefore, these analytical results are obtained in the limit of small heat release, uh, which is uh, presented here, in that when the heat release is small, the velocity of the chapman jouguet wave uh, departs from the sound speed by a small quantity. This is not realistic in real uh, combustion, in real uh, mixture, uh, uh, in, uh, in reality. Uh, this uh, uh, velocity of the chapman jouguet wave, this planar, planar chapman jouguet wave, is typically uh, four, three, four, at least three times uh, the, the speed of sound. However, even if the analysis is, is not useful to obtain a quantitative result, it is very helpful to understand uh, the basic mechanism controlling the dynamics close to the criticality, close to criticality, uh, uh, to understand and e e even for real detonation. Uh, <coughs> the first result that we obtained was an analytical expression of the uh, rarefaction wave. This is the flow uh, velocity in terms of the reduced radius scale by, uh, uh, by the self-similar coordinate. And as you see, this is the analytical result, as you see, uh, the, it, is, it looks exactly uh, qualitatively similar uh, as uh, uh, similar to the result obtained uh, by the self-similar analysis in the opposite limit of a large Mach number uh, of the CG wave. Now, uh, uh, what we, we did is uh, 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 an analysis of the dynamic when we are close to, when, when, uh, uh, where, where is the pointer? 
when, when approaching the Chapman Jouguet uh, 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 velocity, uh, this is in red. We have here the uh, result obtained numerically by, new, by Korobeynikov when the inner structure of the, the modification of the inner structure is neglect. Now, our objective here is to study the transition around this point here. And it is, and, and the result is the following. Uh, here, when considering, uh, to begin with, let's consider that the frame, that we do not retain uh, uh, the modification of the inner structure. So, uh, detonation signals is zero. This is the first step of the analysis. And in that case, uh, the, uh, uh, the rarefaction wave, the analytical expression, the rarefaction wave for the uh, uh, overdriven detonation, meaning when the, uh, when the speed of the detonation is larger uh, 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 than the uh, CG, the planar CG detonation, in that case, the, the, uh, the rarefaction wave uh, uh, velocity uh, versus radius is simply a straight line uh, with an inert core uh, on the left. When uh, the velocity reach, when we reach the, the shaman jouguet condition uh, on, on, the, on, the, on the detonation front, then one should see a transition from a straight line to this line, uh, uh, to, to this self-similar solution that, uh, 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 that has been obtained for the CG wave, for spherical wave, uh, spherical CG wave. So uh, the question was, uh, can, we this, can we understand in the small uh, uh, heat release limit, in the limit of small heat release, can we understand the transition between this straight line to this is the trans in fact uh, uh, the analytical result show a transition like that so as soon there is a transition in uh, a sharp transition in the slope at the front uh, just before uh, 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 the CG velocity it is finite and just after it reach the CG velocity, the slope become, become, become uh, infinite. It is the gradient become infinite. But in the long, on, 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 at long distance, we recover the same straight line with a, a, a slope which is decreasing to zero to, to end up in the long time limit to this uh, refraction wave. So we have a complete description in this small heat release of the transition that, have, uh, 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 that uh, occurring in the rarefaction wave uh, uh, of uh, 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 deto uh, 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 sharp, uh, uh, spherical detonation approaching the CG uh, regime. Now let's uh, go to uh, what. Uh, what is uh, what is the result when the modification of the inner structure is taken into account? Uh, in that case, uh, you, you see the difference that uh, uh, is, is shown here qualitatively. That's, uh, that you know, uh, this uh, uh, you have here when you take into account. Uh, the uh, inner detonation structure. You go continuously from the from 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 uh, the the, uh, the rarefaction waves in the burnt gas far away to the inner structure through a, 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 a profile of uh, velocity, temperature, and so on, which is a profile of uh, uh, in the curb uh, detonation. <coughs> And now, uh, what is very interesting is uh, to, uh, uh, 
to describe uh, this effect of the inner detonation of the modification of the inner detonation uh, structure in a, in a spherical geometry. So, what is its, its effects on the trajectory uh, in the plane? In the plane, uh, velocity of the front, radius of the front, horizontal axis is the, is the radius of the front uh, written in the non-dimensional uh, variable. And you see, and depending, you, you, depending of the approach to the, the CG, the planar CG is here, you see. So here, here far away, uh, you, you have the equivalence of the Taylor uh, blast wave solution. And, uh, and uh, this, and now, for when when the energy sufficiently is not sufficiently uh, large, the decrease here, you decrease the velocity below, 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 and uh, at the, for the long time you obtain a failure. You cannot, you do not ignite the detonation. Now on the opposite, in this case, you see you decrease go below the shaman Juge velocity and then increase to be back to uh, in the long time limit or long at long read at sufficiently large read radius uh, to the uh, CG velocity. Uh, uh, so this is very important, is a very important qualitative result, let's say, uh, because it, it describes a phenomena which was observed in the uh, direct numerical simu simulation of the problem, which is called reignition after a quasi uh, uh, quenching. You see, it looks like it is going to, to be quenched because it, you are far below the Sharpman Jouguet value, but then, then uh, uh, you have a, a, a reignition of the problem. But uh, <laughs> there, is a, there is a critical region between which, uh, uh, no, uh, through which uh, you, go for, you, you go from a failure, you never uh, be back to the CG and uh, you are back to the uh, CG velocity. <clears throat> and and, and uh, uh, what is important to realize is that you are still in overdriven regime when you are well below the uh, CG velocity. You see the CG velocity is here. It turns out that in all this, uh, in all this part here, you are overdriven. What does that mean overdriven? Uh, this means that the sonic point is far away from the exit of in the burn side. The sonic points at this curve here, this, this, uh, these points here. And here the full dot are denotes the exit of the reaction wave. So the sonic point is far away, and here in this region you are subsonic. So this is an over an overdriven detonation, and here you are sonic. And when when uh, 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 you decrease here the velocity, when the velocity decreases, this for for uh, in case of success of ignition. This, so, the sonic point catch the uh, end of the, uh, the the exit of the reaction zone, and then it screen uh, the the uh, it it protects uh, the uh, the inner structure to be further damped by the rarefaction wave behind, and then the inner structure is such that you reignite. The phenomena, and you see, the uh, you are the the velocity increase to approach the CG velocity from below in this in this in this uh, case. So uh, uh, so we have, and this is clearly understood from a physical point of view. You see, uh, uh, as soon as the, uh, the the condition, this is something that I have that I told you. Uh, already, uh, uh, when, when, here you are subsonic. When you are subsonic, any information coming from the uh, uh, rarefaction wave 
enters into uh, the flame, the detonation structure. And yes, because the, because the rarefaction wave is a damping mechanism, it damps, it damps, it damps, it damps, and then when uh, when 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 in this at the mini at the minimum of this, it screen it spot it it, it enter a little bit inside uh, the inner structure of the detonation, and then because you are sonic here, uh, no no perturb the perturbation coming from uh, the uh, rarefaction, rarefaction wave in uh, in the burn gas cannot uh, 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 decrease the speed of the detonation and, the det and, and it is and you have a reignition of the phenomena. So this is an important phenomena that can be understood uh, thanks to this uh, uh, asymptotic analysis in the, in the small heat release. So now let's me go to uh, uh, a different uh, uh, mechanism of uh, initiation, uh, which is a spontaneous initiation of a detonation. What, what, what is it? Uh, this uh, spontaneous uh, mechanism uh, of detonation at high temperature was discovered by Zelovich and uh, also and studied later on by John Lee. <clears throat> it, let's say to begin uh, that uh, a, a det why a detonation is not easy to ignite, hopefully for safety, uh, for safety reasons, <laughs> but why it is difficult. It is simply because the, the, uh, uh, the pressure that you have to attain behind the shock, it should be between uh, 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 should be uh, uh, larger than the, uh, the, 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 uh, uh, well, the pressure of the chapman Or oh, This pressure of the chapman wave is between 30 and 50 atmospheres. This is a very large jump pressure. For example, uh, uh, if, uh, uh, if you consider a homogeneous explosion, or let's say an explosion of a hot, gaseous pocket uh, uniform at constant volume, the delta P over P is not, cannot be larger than the delta T over T, which is about, uh, cannot be above 10. So uh, 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 if an homogeneous pocket of, fresh of hot fresh mixture is going to explode, this will not produce uh, cannot produce a detonation because, because the waves, the pressure wave, which is generated, are too small, have a too small pressure. Good. So, uh, uh, Zeldovich, uh, uh, because he was, work I think he, dis he discovered this phenomena because he was working uh, uh, on the uh, ignition of a nuclear bomb. And the, one of the difficulty for the H-bomb is to ignite the, the combustible. And he noted the following. He said, OK, if, uh, the, first of all, you have to keep in mind a uh, few results concerning the induction delay, the indu induction delay. This delay is highly sensitive to temperature. So when the temperature increases slightly, not so much, but increase sufficiently, the, the, uh, the delay uh, decreases sharply, so strongly. Okay, so uh, uh, here you have a result by uh, Sanchez and William uh, uh, for hydrogen oxygen that I plot just uh, for comparison. So <laughs> now, if you have a gradient of temperature, you know, uh, if, if you have a hot pocket, let me, uh, okay. If the hot pocket is uniform in temperature, you cannot ignite a detonation. But assume that there is a gradient in the hot pocket for one reason or another, that 
the temperature is, decre is, de is decreasing so that the initiation is faster at high temperature and, uh, 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 and took and takes longer time at small temperature because uh, uh, the induction uh, delay increase uh, when the temperature decrease. Uh, 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 so what is going to appear is, is a, a, a signal that is going to propagate uh, 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 with uh, the induction time because as soon as uh, uh, you have a, uh, that you reach uh, you uh, after a time uh, uh, equal to the induction time the reaction start but the reaction start be uh, uh, earlier on the other side than in the cold side. Therefore, you are going to have a wave propagating the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, initiation of the reaction uh, propagates uh, and, and, and the sound and the propagation uh, of this induction front is at a speed which is given by the inverse of the gradient of the induction time associated with the gradient of this temperature here. And, and now it's clear that you are going to have a synchronization of uh, uh, the, uh, 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 the induction front and the pressure pulse when the propagation of the induction front is equal uh, to the speed of, uh, uh, what did I say? No, when, when the velo propagation velocity of the induction front here reach the uh, 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 speed of the sound, which is the speed at which propagate uh, the pressure wave. So in that case, when you have a critical uh, condition somewhere here, here, you can predict that a, 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 you will have a runaway of the pressure uh, because uh, that this can be described, described analytically by the way, by, uh, by this simple, uh, uh, so you have an increase of the pressure that is going to increase proper, at least linearly in time in a very short, with a very short, uh, on a very short time. So here, so this describe a critical uh, uh, condition of spontaneous initiation of a detonation by the temperature on the outside of a temperature of a, uh, uh, in the outside of a, a, a non uniform temperature distribution. <coughs> it turns out that uh, after this, we have described with uh, Lontin Hay uh, another, another phenomena which is uh, just the opposite of this one, which explain that uh, 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 you see uh, this, uh, 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 this is, uh, you have a temperature profile here. Okay, you have a temperature profile here and, and, and this correspond, this temperature profile correspond to uh, chapman joubier velocity here. This is a critical condition of the Lubitsch. Hop, you ignite as a detonation. It follows the CG, the CG, the CG, and then at lower temperature, before reaching uh, the, the plateau value at low temperature, uh, you, uh, the, the detonation quench. And this phenomena is, uh, is once again a, a, a consequence of the large activation energy of the reaction rate. I will not enter into the detail. Uh, this, this, uh, this, anal this is analysis is, is presented in the original paper and in my book also. So uh, uh, this is uh, just a, uh, 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 the origin of, of, of this quenching is the fact that there is a delay uh, be, uh, that the, the shock wave does not propagate exactly at the same speed. This is a, a shock wave 
Uh, and this is the, the uh, so it, it, it's a uh, 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 velocity of the increase of the reaction of the re reaction length. So in fact, uh, because these two velocity are not exactly the same because of a, a lag, a slight, a slight lag uh, between the shock and uh, which is due to the induction and the uh, reaction. Uh, you 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 got this uh, quenching me quenching mechanism. So and this quenching mechanism is important because if you uh, uh, it depends. You know if it occurs before uh, uh, the 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 plateau of the uh, at low temperature, uh, this means that you that that the Zeldovich mechanism is not going to work because you will quench before. If it is below. After, uh, if it occurs at below temperature, at low temperature below, okay, you have ignite, you have the, the detonation is uh, 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 propagating in the cold is uh, 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 in the plateau. <laughs> okay, I will. Uh, okay, uh, I, I skip the detail. Okay, so conclusion. A CG detonation cannot survive to a strong temperature gradient at low temperature. And, uh, and if you want to ignite a detonation in a uniform cold mixture, you should be careful to the profile of, uh, uh, of the temperature in the hot pocket. Let me now go uh, 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 to the uh, main uh, topic that I want to discuss now is the deflagration to detonation transition. This is the, defla the deflagration to detonation transition is a fundamental problem uh, describing an abrupt transition from a flame, which is a quasi azobaric uh, uh, and substantial, substantially subsonic reaction diffusion wave in which the, the pressure effects are negligible and the transition between this system of propagation, at, which is quasi azobaric and slow, at a very fast propagation of a detonation, which is a supersonic compressible wave without diffusion, except inside the, uh, uh, the, the lead shock, as I explained in my previous lecture. So this is a fundamental problem. And uh, the, the, the experiment show that the transition is abrupt, which means that uh, a, 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 a phenomena, a new phenomena, uh, should, uh, uh, should be understood. Turns out, that uh, despite, despite more than a century old, oh my God, there is a, a mistake, researchers, uh, DTT remains a poorly understood problem. You know, uh, and the situation uh, is even worse. Uh, even since the pioneering experiment of Tony Oppenheim in Berkeley, DDT has been known to develop in various forms. Not, you know, uh, viscous effect in the boundary layer have been, uh, have been studied, analyzed, unsteady compression waves, thermal gradients, local explosion, and so on. And uh, one can summarize uh, the state of the art, uh, of the knowledge, uh, saying that there is no mechanism of DVDFT that, that is generally agreed upon as being universal. So in fact, we are lost <laughs> to, for, to, 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 say, to, say uh, to say frankly the things that we don't understand this, thing, this very fundament, uh, important, uh, fundamental problem, which has uh, many important consequences uh, uh, on, in the applied, uh, uh, for applied physics. We will, it turns out we have made very recently uh, a step forward, uh, but only in the limited uh, uh, case 
of, a deto of the detonation, de deflagration to a detonation transition of an elongate laminar flame propagating in tubes. And, and, and this is what I am going to present now uh, without entering into the detail, but just uh, to give you a how study uh, uh, of how, it, uh, how the phenomena works. Uh, just before, let me tell you a few words concerning the DDT induced by local explosion. Uh, observed by, by Tony Oppenheim in uh, working with in a, in a, let's say a large tube filled by hydrogen oxygen pure hydrogen and oxygen mixture. <coughs> it it uh, it found it found uh, Tony Oppenheim and his co-worker found out that uh, uh, there are exploding hot spot in the boundary layer between the lead shock and the flame. So that in this phenomena that is sometimes observed, it is not systematically observed, it is sometimes observed and sometimes it is not observed. You, you, you have a hot spot exploding in front of the frame and typically in the boundary layer of the tube. And the, the explanation of this phenomena uh, could be uh, the, the Zendovich mechanism because uh, uh, combining the heating by viscous dissipation ahead of the, of the frame and compressional heating uh, so that this is going to produce a transverse temperature and thus a transverse gradient of induction time and this is going May, may explain local explosion ahead of the frame by the spontaneous ignition mechanism of Zendovich that I have just mentioned uh, uh, before. Now, <laughs> let me remind what are the basic, in, remind uh, or recall, excuse me, what are the basic ingredients of deflagration to detonation transition in a tube. The first ingre important ingredients is the piston effect, uh, saying that when the flame propagates from a closed end of the tube to a, an open end, the, the, uh, the, the flow, the column of flow ahead of the, of the, uh, uh, ahead, uh, uh, of the of the flame is put in motion at a given velocity, as I am as I, I am uh, uh, present that uh, in the in, before in some lecture before, and this flow is going to uh, to uh, create shock waves that propagates ahead of the flame at a larger velocity. So the important point. Is, is, is that you have a shock wave propagating ahead, and this shock wave is increase the temperature of the gas because of the uh, adiabatic because of, of the uh, compression of the gas through the shock through, through the leak shock. Uh, now, if the flow if the flow is turbulent, assume for example uh, the the, the flame surface it is increased by wrinkling the by the, the turbulence uh, vortices uh, wrinkle the front so that the surface area of the flame increase and uh, the velocity uh, that is uh, 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 ahead the the flame is uh, 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 increase is multiplied by the what is called what I will, what uh, we will call the folding factor, resulting from the turbulence. Right. Okay, there is a piston effect. <coughs> now, the flame acceleration, so an increase of the of the flame surface, generates train of shock. So this is also an important. And the last point is the heating of fresh mixture by compressible effect. Uh, 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 through the shock wave or through unsteady compression wave 
uh, uh, red, red the flame. <clears throat> so this is again uh, uh, what we call the piston effect, which is uh, uh, written again here. You see, if uh, the folding factor is uh, S, the turbulent frame speed is SUB, where UB is the uh, uh, laminar, is, is the frame speed of a, uh, 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 in the reference frame of a, a planar frame, uh, uh, the burnt gas leaving the planar frame. This is UB, UB over UL, UL the laminar frame speed is simply the ratio of the temperature. So what you have to do is just uh, to replace uh, the UB uh, that you have uh, in that case here by SUB, you multiply by the factor. Okay. And now, but the velocity, but this is a detail, but uh, uh, whatever, the velocity is, uh, the velocity of the gas is different from the velocity of the front because the piston acts like a semi-transparent piston, uh, uh, excuse me, the flame act as, acts as a semi-transparent piston. Now, if, uh, uh, let me uh, describe a, a phenomena called the turbulence-induced DDT. If the flow upstream of the flame become turbulent, assume that the renal number of this flow is sufficiently large, uh, to uh, uh, develop turbulence. This turbulence, when the frame arrives on the turbulence, to, uh, the, the turbulence, uh, the turbulence eddy wrinkles the flame front, and this increase the uh, increase the folding factor. Now there is a runaway mechanism. Is uh, for one reason the S increase the velocity. Of the, of the gas increase, so the renal number increase, so the intensity of the turbulence increase, so the wrinkling <laughs> increase. So this is a runaway mechanism. Uh, and uh, is if this, in that case, if, if the flow velocity increase, the shock, the Mach number of the lead shock increase and the temperature of the gas increase. So this is, and then, if uh, uh, you increase this Mach number of the lead shock ahead of the flame sufficiently, for example, uh, Mach between five and, and six, the temperature is rich, it's uh, 1200 K, typically. Uh, this is a Mach, is the temperature of the compressed gas uh, behind the shock uh, 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 with a Mach number, propagation Mach number equal to six. And now at this high temperature, the uh, uh, del induction delay decreases strongly because it is highly sensitive to the temperature and you ignite uh, the, the measure sufficiently close to the shock and this can explain the formation of a detonation. This is a, a scenario uh, which is called the turbulence induced DDT. It was uh, uh, considered by the Russian scientist Shelkin, uh, explaining uh, how the transition of a laminar uh, or let's say a flame can transit to a detonation. Okay, good. Unfortunately, this scenario is never observed in the experiments, especially for elongated flame in tube. The sudden transition occur for much smaller, smaller Mach number of lead shock with the temperature of the gas in the fresh mixture, which is too small for a sufficiently fast self ignition therefore uh, the sudden DDT cannot be explained by a turbulence induced DDT uh, not only because of the phenomena but also because uh, 
most of the experiment, no, the last, the, the more recent experiments show a laminar flame with a laminar flow. So it cannot be the turbulence and juice uh, DDT mechanism of Shelkin. Uh, this uh, very nice experiments uh, have been developed uh, 10 years ago by uh, 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 this is Chinese from uh, uh, um, uh, uh, on the island, uh, I don't remember the name, uh, and, and uh, by a, a group of Russian uh, and, and Sweden, Lieberman is uh, from origin Russian, but he is now working in Sweden, he's professor in Sweden, and he's working with many, many good uh, uh, Russian scientists, uh, especially good in numerics. And they consider, both of them, <laughs> consider very energetic stoichiometric hydrogen oxygen mixture or acetylene oxygen mixture, I did not put, and here you have for this mixture, uh, uh, this is pure hydrogen and uh, oxygen at a, a stoichiometric uh, composition. So uh, the temperature of the flame is relatively high, it's a 3000 uh, K, and, and uh, typically, and, and, and the flame, the lamin this is for laminar flame, and the laminar flame speed is very large, it's the largest. Uh, uh, laminar flame speed that can be observed, it is uh, uh, close to 10 meters per second, just below it's more 9 meters per second, but you see this is much, much larger than the uh, laminar flame of uh, an hydrocarbon air mixture, for example, uh, uh, propane air or methane air, which is about uh, 25 uh, or 30 centimeters per second. So, uh, the, the good thing with this mixture uh, to observe the DDT is that they are very energetic and so with a flame speed which is relatively large, but still much, much, uh, uh, very, very uh, substantially subsonic because the sound is, is one, is a, uh, let's say, uh, uh, close to uh, 500 meters per second. So you see there is a, 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 a large difference between two. But for the CG wave in this mixture, the detonation wave, planar, the planar wave, uh, the velocity is about uh, 2,800 meters per second, which is supersonic by the time. But the temperature is typically of the same order of magnitude. It is a little bit higher, but not so much. Uh, compared to flame. What they observe is the following. The sudden transition occur at the tip of the flame. At, I will explain what is the tip of the flame in the laminar regime. This is, this is especially when working uh, with, uh, uh, um, oh, excuse me, when more working with uh, 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 sub millimeter scale, uh, you know, millimeter scale tubes, you know, uh, this tube are very thin and, and turbulence cannot develop, you know, because the Reynolds number is very too small, even with uh, a large flame speed. Therefore, uh, th this experiment are very, very nice. Uh, really, you, the people, uh, the, uh, I, uh, my advice is that you look to this paper of uh, Professor Wu at all, uh, uh, which uh, they are very good paper, and and the paper of Lieberman at all also are very very interesting uh, <coughs> experimental paper, but also they did a, a very good uh, multi-dimensional uh, direct uh, uh, numerical simulation of the problem. Even though I don't believe in the direct numerical simulation, but uh, very good. Okay. <clears throat> okay, it turns out that at, uh, 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 the, that the temperature of the fresh mixture uh, uh, at the transition is, is not larger than 650 Kelvin. 
the Mach number of the lead shock being too small. It's very far from the Mach number equal five, which is required for a self-ignition of the mixture behind the shock. So the DDT is observed. You know, it is observed it's, uh, uh, in a very, very, very short time. The transition is not larger. Uh, the duration of the transition between the laminar and the, and the, uh, the, the, the frame and the detonation is uh, occur uh, 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 between 10 minus six seconds. Oh, it uh, should be compared to 10 minus three seconds, which is typically the transit time of a particle across a frame. It is a very, very small time. And this time is more or less related to the acoustic time, uh, the, uh, ac the transit time of an acoustic wave across the, the flame thickness. So uh, 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 this microsecond is really is a, is a really short time. So it is a very sharp transition. But you know, because of, uh, so it is observed, but there is no explanation because we, we do not understand why. Uh, uh, they try explanation in the paper of Lieberman, but this, this explanation are not very good. <clears throat> My point is the following, that it is going, a, a finite type singularity is going to occur in the combustion wave. And this I want just uh, to explain you it, uh, to what does that mean. It turns out that there is an enlightening theoretical analysis of a self-similar solution of the double discontinuity model for a turbulent frame in the wrinkle front regime, I will explain what it is, by De Joulin a long time ago. You see, uh, it's uh, 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 close to, you know, uh, 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 35 years before, and this, uh, uh, even, yes, uh, 30, 30, more than 30 years before, and, uh, uh, and this study was ignored, completely ignored by the combustion community until recently. This is, and uh, 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 so I just want to describe this, uh, this beautiful analysis. It turns out that this analysis has not taken seriously, maybe for the reason that they, they consider very small Mach number close to unity for the lead shock. And this is not what is observed in experiments. Uh, and and uh, so people maybe uh, consider that it was just uh, uh, an, a, a, a mathematical exercise without physical interest. It turns out that this, this is not right. It is, a, it is really a new mechanism that has to be considered to understand the, to understand the DT. <coughs> okay. Uh, 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 here I have uh, again uh, a sketch what the situation is. You, you have a flame brush yeah. here. Uh, here, a closed, the closed end of the vessel, of the, of the tube. And here is a uniform flow at the temperature of the Neumann state. Uh, assume that there is no heat losses between uh, uh, through, through the wall. This is, this is clearly not right, but uh, uh, I will explain to you why it does not, it's not important. And you look for a quasi steady solution of the frame speed and uh, 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 the detonation uh, uh, constant. Uh, and this is called a, a, a self similar solution because the distance between the, the frame 
and the shock, the supersonic shock, the subsonic flame, and increase linearly with time because you assume that both velocity are constant in time. So uh, this, this uh, 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 double discontinuity model was also considered by Shelkin to understand, to, to describe a, a, a turbulence induced uh, DDT uh, mechanism. And now you look for the relation between uh, the folding factor that you have here and also here inside in, uh, inside the flow here because this is multiplied by a folding factor uh, 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 and so the relation between the folding factor assuming a given velocity assuming a given law of the laminar flame speed versus the temperature, okay? Assume that you know this law. Now you want to know what is the relation between the, uh, the, the, the speed of the uh, uh, lead shock, propagation velocity of the lead shock, and the propagation of the uh, 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 flame brush, the velocity of propagation of the flame brush. But, and, and the problem, uh, is completely is fully nonlinear for what reason? The third reason is uh, there are three reasons: is that the relation between the flame speed and the temperature read the flame is uh, is given by the theory of laminar flame. Assume that S is fixed, so uh, it is given by the theory of laminar flame. But this is strongly nonlinear, and then it turns out that uh, uh, the, uh, because the temperature of the fresh mixture is, is assumed to be the same as the temperature of the compressed gas behind the shock, you, uh, there are related this, temperature are related non-linearly by the ranking Eugenio condition. So when you uh, put together all these non-linear relations, <laughs> you find a nonlinear solution of the velocity and the propagation of, uh, 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 you see, uh, uh, and the propagation of the flame, you find a nonlinear relation, which uh, has a turning point in such a way that you do not have uh, uh, any uh, solution above a critical value of the uh, of the folding factor, and uh, and so what can we conclude from that? That there is no self-similar solution when the folding factor is sufficiently large. It turns out in the analysis of Guillaume that this critical value is not so large. It's between, uh, let's say, uh, we say 15 and 20. So this, you required a frame which is not planar. You, you require a frame which is wrinkled. And in that case, you, there is no more self-similar solution. So does that explain a DDT? Nobody knows. Uh, it turns out that, that the unsteady effect become dominant because uh, the quasi-steady solution does not exist. Uh, so uh, this means only that the, 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 uh, uh, the conclusion of that is that the unsteady effect should become very important uh, when the folding factor is sufficiently large. But the strong weakness of this analysis, which maybe explain why it was not considered by the combustion community until recently, is that it considered two weak shock and two slow flames. And this is contradict, is not what is observed in experiment. In experiment, slow flame are never uh, observed to transit to a detonation, maybe because the tube was not sufficiently long, I don't know but never observed, and, and more of that, 
but uh, uh, more important is that uh, the speed of the lead shock typically is much larger than than uh, than unity. It should be typically Mach number uh, uh, observed is between three and two point five and three. <laughs> However, very recently, Sivashinsky and co-worker, who Sivashinsky was a, was a, uh, the scientist, which is who is a well-known scientist in combustion. He was a student of the Lovitch, huh, by the way. <laughs> and uh, 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 Grisha Sivachinsky uh, solved the plane of flame problem with a reaction rate multiplied by the critical value, or a slightly larger than the square of the critical value observed by Dijolin in order to produce a, a laminar flame velocity, which is uh, uh, 100, uh, 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 which is, excuse me, uh, 10, uh, uh, 10 times smaller, uh, larger than the laminar flame speed, corresponding hopefully to uh, the analysis of, of Dijoulin, of the ring. So what, what he was doing, he was solving the planar flame structure with a reaction rate multiplied by a factor larger than 100. And, and, and now it, it looked to the numerics of the, uh, uh, of the inner structure, of the dynamics of the inner structure of this wave, of this, uh, uh, excuse me, of uh, uh, this flame. And it turns out that a few times after ignition, they observed a runaway corresponding to a DDT. So when you ignite a flame, close a, a, a plan, planar flame, okay? Planar flame, close to a wall with a, a reaction rate multiplied by a factor 100, this flame shot a few times after ignition uh, 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 transit to detonation, numerically. So this confirmed, in a sense, uh, the, the analysis of Dijoulin. But the problem is that so make this, uh, 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 this model of laminar flames is non-physical because it corresponds to uh, a model where the uh, uh, frequency factor of the collisions in the gas given by the kinetic theory of gas is multiplied by a 100, and this is non-physical. Nevertheless, even if the model is non-physical, it tells you that uh, the Dijoulin de, de uh, thermal feedback mechanism should be important. Okay, I think that I, am, I will stop now uh, for uh, 10 minute breaks, okay? Sure, Okay, good. So uh, uh, we we, uh, also, we have a question. If you would like to answer that, excuse me. Uh, there is a question that has been raised. Uh, can uh, I read it? Could you? I you know I am very short in time for to my lecture, so I would prefer to. To to, uh, to okay. The, the com uh, okay later on. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, at the end of the lecture, for example. Okay. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, so uh, uh, this this uh, very interesting result of uh, an uh, analytical re result. Uh, concerning the thermal feedback of the shock uh, to the flame, uh, explaining the, uh, that there is no, no more self-similar solution above a certain value of, let's say, the flame speed, which is, uh, what if it's the same to say the flame speed than to say that the, the, uh, above the critical value of the folding factor. Uh, Uh, okay. 
There are two key mechanisms for elongated frame in a tube. The first one is the finger shaped front of a laminar frame in a tube and uh, uh, leading to a self accelerating elongated front of a flame ignited at the center of the closed end of a tube. This is, uh, for example, this is clearly seen on the uh, on experiments of Clane uh, uh, B uh, and on the numer and on di direct numerical uh, simulation in three dimension by uh, uh, Bishkov. And he here is a excuse me. Okay, here is a sketch of the flame, and in blue you have the streamlines of the burnt gases. And uh, 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 the, the, uh, the lateral wing of, of, this, uh, of this flame is sketched here, showing that there is a, a flow of burnt gas uh, directed toward uh, the center of uh, uh, the tube. Uh, and the, Second key mechanism is a very energetic mixture, saying that the ratio of the uh, uh, temperature of burnt gas and uh, fresh mix and burn is large, so that uh, more important is the density uh, change uh, <coughs> uh, uh, across, uh, 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 across the flame. So, and which turns out to be a very large density uh, ratio of the uh, flame speed in the burn gas and in the fresh mixture. Uh, so the essential is uh, phenomena that uh, uh, that is going to produce very important phenomena is a backflow uh, of burn gas at the tip uh, of the of the uh, excuse me uh, ah, at the tip of uh, 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 this elongate flame. This backflow, this velocity UBF is explained because of the lateral wing uh, that here, which is uh, sketch here, where, the, where uh, uh, with such streamline, this is going to produce a mass source on the axis of the tube uh, coming from the burnt gas uh, 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 issue from the lateral wing of uh, the of the uh, elongated flame, and if uh, uh, you assume that the burnt gas velocity is is constant, so there is no variation. It's clear that the flow, the increase of the flow that you, that that appear, burn gas flow at the tip of the frame is uh, uh, proportional to the length uh, of of the elongated frame, and the simple calculation then show you that this uh, 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 that uh, uh, the Give you an equation for the elongation of the flame, of the which is leading to an exponential growth of uh, 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 the size of this uh, 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 curved front. Uh, uh, so this explains the self acceleration of the flame of at the flame of the flame tip. And it turns out that uh, in, in, in some of the experiments, DDT is observed exactly at the tip yeah. Uh, uh, here is a pist one dimensional piston model that I am going to use in order to explain DDT. Uh, you see, you have it's uh, this, the burn gas flow UBF can be considered, you know, assuming, neglecting the curvature effects of the tip, assume that it is uh, planar geometry is enough to explain what happens as a tip, you may consider a frame, planar, this is planar, there is no wrinkle frame, there is no turbulence, but you are behind a, a piston uh, 
uh, pushing the, the pushing the burnt gas flow at the velocity UBF, okay, uh, uh, coming from the burn, uh, the combustion of the lateral wing, okay. So, <clears throat> and this phenomenon of burnt gas flow has been observed experimentally uh, by PAV experiment, nice experiment at Poitiers. Uh, uh, eight years ago. Alors, this backflow is going to play a very important role for DDT at the tip. Uh, 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 and we have just published a paper using this uh, 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 one dimensional piston model here which represent what happened at the tip of uh, this elongated flame. And the first part of analysis in this paper, that is, is, is not yet appear, is going to appear in the following week. Uh, 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 the first part of the analysis follow exactly uh, the same spirit as the analysis of the Julien. But now you are dealing with a very energetic mixture uh, uh, and uh, with the piston model that is with the backflow. This is a two different, the main difference, uh, but the, the, the philosophy is the same as in the day Julien. We are looking to uh, the feed, the thermal feedback of the lead shock. And, and thanks to the backflow, uh, so we, we obtain, uh, first of all, uh, let me say that we obtain, uh, um, excuse me, we, we obtain a, a similar turning point where now sigma is, is, is elongation of the flame. It's not, a, it's just the elongation of the, the, it's related to the, to the elongation of the flame. And thanks to uh, this backflow, which is proportional to sigma, in fact, there is, uh, 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 the, the, because of this thermal feedback described by Dijouin, first described by Dijouin, uh, now we have a similar uh, turning point, but uh, the difference with Dijouin is that now we have a very large temperature. Uh, uh, but the activation energy in burned gas, you know, when you have 10 <laughs> for the activation energy, <laughs> with respect to TB, uh, it turns out that uh, the, the, this, uh, 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 when you consider the activation energy uh, to the fresh, to the burnt gas in the, at the temperature ahead of the shock, which this is, a, a, you obtain a, a such, a, a temp, a, a, excuse me, because of the ratio TB, this is a mistake. Because, because of the uh, large ratio, uh, you, you, the effective Lewis, um, excuse me, the effective uh, 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 Zeldovich number here, or the activation energy, is not so large. The non-linearity, in fact, coming with the temperature is, is like a, a, a power law in this, uh, for this model of a flame of very energetic, but this does not uh, is not very important. In fact, the only important thing is that now you can reach uh, the critical solution with uh, a realistic uh, uh, energetic mixture with ordinary reaction rate of a, 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 a real mixture. And it turns out, and this was a big surprise that uh, 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 the critical condition that we observe is in excellent agreement with the DDT experiments that I have just mentioned before, uh, 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 leading to a flame velocity, a laminar flame velocity, uh, uh, which is 40 meters meter per second, a, flame, a critical flame speed of uh, close to 900 meters per second, but 
what is interesting is that the critical uh, 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 elongation, which is uh, the critical value of the ratio of the lengths divided by the radius uh, uh, corresponding to the turning point is not so large. It's uh, close to two. And, and more, more, more important is that the Mach number here is not large as it is in the experiment. It is between two, two, two points. This is the Mach, critical Mach number of the lead shot. Right. So uh, now <laughs> we are left. <laughs> okay. This is, is interesting. It shows that, uh, you know, this correspondence of uh, uh, the critical condition of the thermal feedback and the DDT experiments. Uh, uh, the critical condition of the DDT experiments uh, uh, let leads, leads, leads us to think that clearly uh, this thermal feedback is, uh, 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 is involved in, in the DDT phenomena. But this does not explain the DDT because we are still uh, faced with the same problem, the temperature of the fresh mixture the just just the red the flame at the transition that the ddt is too small to explain a, 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 a self ignition of the fresh mixture therefore uh, the idea that uh, uh, I, I am going to present now is that uh, what is important that the key point is that i will show that the dynamics uh, unsteady uh, phenomena, oh, excuse me, uh, unsteady phenomena are become essential near criticality. And this unsteady compressible effect, I will give some arguments to uh, 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 saying that this is going to describe a finite time singularity of the wave. So this is a quite a new uh, result. Now, <clears throat> what is the limit of the weakness of the self-similar solution of the double, double discontinuity? This weakness is the fact that the, the velocity being constant of the gas and of, uh, of the flame and of the shock, excuse me, where, okay, you know, because it's, it considers this analysis considers constant frame velocity and constant shock velocity, it neglects the acceleration of flame, the phenomena of acceleration of flame. And uh, 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 it turns out that this, uh, uh, this, uh, uh, acceleration of flame is an important phenomenon because this is acceleration of the flame. This is acceleration of the shock, which is well known uh, to produce unsteady effect leading to the formation of, the, of shock waves. So additional shock waves. So formation of additional shock waves. <coughs> so we are lead to uh, study the unsteady compression uh, uh, the unsteady compression wave. And uh, uh, <coughs> uh, when, when I will explain uh, uh, the following. Uh, the the, the um, critical conditions is going to show, we are going to show that at the critical condition, there is a divergence that appears. The least increase of the elongation, the least, more precisely, the least increase rate of the rate of the elongation produce a diver divergence of the flame acceleration at the tip. So, uh, 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 as we know, if the flame, if there is an acceleration, a strong acceleration, we are going to produce shock wave very close to the flame. So let's... Uh, 
and uh, uh, and uh, uh, this can be uh, easily uh, uh, understood by the shape of this quasi steady curve here when you developed the frame this is the the frame the the flow the, the flow excuse me this is the frame velocity uh, uf uh, uh, versus uh, more exactly the inverse it, it is uh, it, it, it is the elongation versus the frame velocity uh, around this point you you should have a relation of of uh, this type you know because you you have a turning point and <coughs> Therefore, when, if you have a, a small elongation, sigma t is elongation, okay, so it measures the elongation of the frame. If you look, uh, 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 if you have, let's say, a, a linear increase of uh, 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 the elongation around the critical elongation, let's call T star, the time at which you reach the turning point, it's just taking the derivative of this, of the, this square root function here, coming from this expression, you see that when you reach the critical, uh, 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 when you reach the time at which uh, uh, you reach the critical condition, you have a divergence of the derivative of the, of the flow of the of the frame velocity, so you have a, a divergence of this acceleration, and this is going to produce a strongly unsteady compressible effect. Therefore, uh, not we we do not have to stay stuck with a self-similar solution with constant velocity, but we can take advantage of the fact that near the critical condition of the self, quasi steady self similar solution, the least uh, increase of the uh, increase rate of the length of the frame length, of the elongation here, will produce a divergence of the acceleration. And this is going to produce a very strong uh, compressible effects. All right. Uh, so it's clear that uh, quasi steady state are not no longer are no longer valid at this, at this point, and formation of the shock inside the frame structure is going to appear, uh, and, and this is a strong dynamical effect, uh, which appears at this critical point. Uh, 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 so uh, what what in order to understand. Uh, this phenomena, we simplify the problem and consider a, a, a classical piston uh, with a velocity of, uh, satisfying the same, uh, the same uh, evolution as, uh, uh, as uh, 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 half the frame uh, uh, in the square root because you, we are near criticality. So you assume now, we consider now a piston that is at, uh, uh, evolving to, uh, uh, to a critical time where uh, you approach the critical velocity by a square root of t store minus t. So this is exactly what was obtained close to uh, the critical condition of the self-similar solution. So now we study this problem. This is a mathematical problem. Now you have a strong, you have a, 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 pure, sh a pure shock that is satisfying this slope. And when, and you start and you solve the following problem for time negative, uh, the piston is con at constant velocity and, and, and uh, at infinity, the, uh, the, the flow uh, 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 and at the initial time, at the time I negative, mean, the flow is at the uh, 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 the speed of the flow is the same as the piston. So you have you have the the, the following problem: a piston, which is uh, 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 at a, uh, uh, at velocity 
uh, at a constant velocity. So this is a self-similar solution for two negative with and with a flow which is uniform in front of it. And then uh, a starting positive value of the time, you increase the, uh, uh, the, the velocity like as a, as a square root of the time as explained here. So this problem can be solved, in fact. Uh, the boundary condition at infinity, it's clear that nothing is, uh, uh, that the, uh, at infinity, uh, far from the piston, the flow is uh, uh, uniform at the same velocity as it was at the beginning. Uh, in this parameter, in this problem, you have only two parameters you, uh, in this reduced form here. You have the characteristic time to star, which is a, a, given, a given quantity, and you have the ratio of the critical velocity uh, by the speed of the sound far away. Uh, this is, uh, and so now you have a, pro a, par a problem with two parameters and you can solve the problem using the Riemann's method of the characteristics. So we, we will use the Riemann's method of the characteristics. Uh, and uh, for those who are interested in, in how to solve this problem, uh, I give the advice to look to the Landau book, how to solve the problem. Because the Landau book used a very uh, uh, clear methods uh, for the Riemann's, uh, for uh, a clear explanation or a clear uh, presentation uh, of the Riemann's methods in a way different that you can find in the more traditional uh, uh, fluid mechanical book. So, <coughs> What is interesting is that uh, 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 you, uh, because of, uh, of this, uh, you, you will find a formation of the shock uh, at a time to star, to, to S, excuse me, which is uh, written here. And this time to S. So you form a shock at the time to S just after zero uh, and this is meaningful if this time is shorter than the critical time at which you reach the uh, uh, critical condition and this gives you uh, 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 that in the opposite in the opposite condition what does happen in the opposite condition we are going to find that the first singularity appear on the shock this is uh, so uh, uh, this is the final. It's, uh, the calculation is not is it, not easy. Uh, it's not dif technically difficult. Is is just uh, uh, let's say uh, a subtle method uh, uh, to solve the Riemann's problem. And the result is written here that uh, depending on, on, on the, uh, two, uh, the, 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 the ratio the ratio of m star and uh, uh, a square root of the characteristic time in uh, uh, non-dimensional units and uh, the, the, uh, the flow the critical piston the, the critical velocity at the piston depending on, on this uh, uh, and this depends on the initial condition in fact so this you, you have to go to the calculation to understand that and uh, uh, you have that that the first singularity appear on the show on, on the piston but in the other case the first singularity appear ahead of the piston <laughs> but uh, so what we did before to, to solve uh, 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 to, to perform direct numerical simulation of the full problem of the frame, we, I, I suggest to solve first uh, the, uh, this, uh, uh, numerically this simple problem that I have explained, that I have uh, presented here, here, the piston of the problem, or the, the problem of the piston. 
And it turns out that this, this prediction is in excellent agreement with the direct, numer direct numerical simulation. But in addition of that, the direct uh, numerical simulation show that in a, 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 uh, uh, even in the, in the second case, where the first singularity appear ahead of the piston, at a critical condition, a, 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 a shock is formed on the piston. And this is uh, just shown in this picture here. You see, you, you see, this is the position of the piston when you arrive at a critical condition. This is the velocity, uh, this is the upstream velocity. You have here the primary shock, which has been formed before uh, reaching this uh, position here of the piston. This is the position of the piston. This is the distance uh, 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 ahead of the piston. And, and at that time, you see a singularity uh, 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 infinite, infinite, excuse me, infinite gradients appearing at the shock. And this is a quite different for shock formation than the one which is formed here, because the one is formed here, at, uh, it is formed at the uh, minimum velocity, and this is formed at the maximum velocity. So this, this uh, 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 shock formation, these shock are quite different from nature, of a quite different nature. Now, in order to see uh, uh, more clearly the phenomena, if you assume that after crossing the critical condition, you keep the critical velocity of the piston, this is what is done in this here. Now, you have the velocity is constant, and what do you see? You see the piston that is, you know, in, uh, 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 moving on the right direction. It was at 0. Point, uh, something four, and it is uh, uh, now uh, 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 at 0. Point, it's around this place here now, and everything has moved uh, ahead. And what happened is that the 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 this the, this shock form at the piston is propagating and will catch the uh, primary, the primary shock and to end up uh, to the self-similar solution of a lead shock follow uh, with a uniform flow behind uh, when this shock, when the secondary shock catch, catch, catches the first shock. So what is important uh, thanks to the numeric, which I cannot, we cannot pr prove that properly, in, uh, uh, exactly, uh, 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 theoretically, uh, because as soon as the shock is formed, the, the, the flow is no longer uh, uh, isentropic. So in that case, uh, you cannot use the, 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 Riemann's approach, the Riemann's method, because Riemann's methods work for a night for when the entropy is constant. But this is no longer the case. As soon as you have a shock in front of you, in front, uh, a, a lead shock, that is uh, uh, the intensity of which is changing with the time. Uh, now, when you, when you look to the, now to the problem of the frame, this this analysis that I have just presented to you suggests that a shock is going to be formed inside the frame structure when approaching the critical condition. And uh, uh, what, what, is a f what, what is going to happen uh, at that time? You have to go to direct numerical simulation of the unsteady frame structure uh, 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 with a natural extension of the piston model for investigating the vicinity, the vicinity of the uh, critical condition. And this model is the model that I have written here. You, this is a frame, the unsteady frame structure. And this is the same problem as usual, except that now you have to, uh, uh, to apply a flow velocity 
just at the exit of the reaction zone, this flow velocity is being related to the flow, to the temperature uh, 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 ahead of the, of the flame and to, which is related to the flow uh, here. So, so this, is, this, this is not very, uh, uh, let's say, it should not be a two R problem because it is a one dimensional unsteady problem, compressible a compressive effect inside the frame structure, but uh, uh, one dimensional. So this is, this is could be solved and this is work is in progress. And, but for the moment, we do not have the result. It looks, it, 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 the first result we have show a runaway of the velocity that shows that we are going uh, this uh, unsteady problem I have described with the formation of the shock inside the frame circle is going to uh, to explain DDT. But I do not have yet a complete uh, analytical result, uh, excuse me, numerical results, and I prefer to wait. Uh, I, I will not claim that uh, the problem has been solved for the moment. Uh, uh, the direct numerical solution is not so clear for the moment. Uh, uh, what I want also to say is the following, is that remember that the critical length, uh, uh, elongation of the frame, uh, the critical, uh, defined in the critical conditions, is not large. So it, this, if this is true, it could explain that cellular frame, because cellular frame, typical elongation of the c c c cellular frame, and are, are close to two, something like that. It can be 1.5, two, something like that. Huh? And so therefore, uh, uh, if, if uh, my prediction is right, uh, that we are going to explain the DDT by this one dimensional piston model here numerically, this will could be also explained uh, 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 the transition of deflagration to detonation in stars in the supernovae uh, uh, because, because of the relay Taylor uh, instability crea creating cellular flames. Okay, I will not give you to use a detailed calculation and I will now change, uh, go to the next lecture. So I escape, I have to change slides to change files. So, where is, okay, that is my file. So, the next one. Ah, the, uh, uh, the next file is 12. I will be very fast with 12. I will not spend too much time with 12. Okay, uh, the second lecture concerned galloping detonation, with, which is, uh, 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 we call galloping detonation, the longitudinal uh, oscillation of a planar frame. It is an instability of, of uh, planar detonation. It is an instability of planar, det planar detonation. The, uh, the physical mechanism are uh, relatively clear. Uh, you see, I have plot here different uh, distribution of heat release rate for different value of the detonation velocity, which is different value of the temperature of the gas behind the shock, because this is related to the velocity of the shock, this temperature. So you see, when the temperature increases, that is when the shock increases, the distribution of, of heat release probably, uh, becomes closer and closer to the shock. And, uh, and, in the, and when the velocity of the detonation decreases, it is just the opposite. It's, it, go in, it goes in the other direction. Uh, <coughs> so, uh, one can consider an inequality, uh, uh, wholly speaking, uh, this, uh, indeed, 
this are uh, numerical simulation for hydrogen oxygen flame. I don't remember exactly the condition, but uh, uh, so you, it is clear that we have an induction length, uh, 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 which is quasi uniform, where, where the flow is quasi uniform, temperature is uniform, and you have behind a, 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 behind this uniform induction zone, you have a zone of heat release, and roughly speaking, these two these two lengths are of the same order of magnitude. Uh, the galloping detonation is an oscillatory instability uh, of the uh, 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 of these structures. You know, not only alors, the 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 shock, uh, the detonation is oscillating, and uh, uh, associates with that is the induction length is also you have an, an oscillation of 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 uh, uh, the uh, uh, total length uh, 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 of the detonation structure it turns out that the first numerical simulations was developed very early of this problem by uh, a group uh, i think is los in los alamos it's very early uh, when the, <laughs> The legend, the legend says that when they saw this oscillation, <laughs> they believe it was because the numerics were not good. <laughs> But it turns out that this oscillation, this oscillation, are real. Uh, uh, now I, I, I would like to briefly, uh, in few, uh, in the 10 minutes, uh, in 10 minutes, briefly uh, uh, give you the essential of, of this uh, instability. Uh, <clears throat> it turns out that we, you have a feedback loop uh, from, from uh, 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 coming from the uh, motion, you know, uh, from, from this, uh, from the heat release, from the region where the heat release and Uh, the, the, uh, the, you, you see, if the temperature if the if the temperature here increase, uh, the 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 uh, reaction zone gets closer to the shock, and uh, so that now uh, and and this and this is going. You have a feedback loop between uh, this uh, uh, the burned gases, not the burned gas, the reaction the reaction zone and the lead shock. Yeah. And I will explain that uh, you have two different coupling between the uh, distribution of heat release and the shock uh, through acoustic wave and entropy wave. And it turns out that it is possible to obtain an asymptotic solution, analytic solution of this problem uh, using uh, Strongly overdriven in the strongly overdriven regime, when the when when uh, the ratio specific heat is not not very large, but we obtain a, 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 a similar solution, uh, 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 exact uh, asymptotic solution, uh, a similar theoretical solution, in the opposite regime, when you are close. To the Chapman Jouguet when the heat release is small, which is quite op it's opposite of the two. And but we do not have an analytical result in between. But the two these two extremes uh, show the same the same the uh, uh, similar results. So uh, let's just uh, by a simple. Uh, 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 you know, uh, it's very easy from the earlier equation to reduce the problem to uh, generalize uh, acoustic problem fed by the the heat release the heat release rate, so it is a distribution in space and time, and the. Uh, 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 so you have this equation and you have an entropy uh, uh, an entropy equation. So uh, in fact, you have a continuous set of feedback loop 
between the uh, show uh, okay between the uh, heat release the the domain of heat release and uh, the uh, uh, the lead shock and this can be seen by this equation you have an upstream running acoustic wave so as soon as the, the heat release is disturbed it sends an acoustic wave upstream and uh, any disturbance at uh, the Neumann state of the shock propagates signal downstream by a downstream running acoustic wave which is this one here you know you have a different side here okay and in addition of that you have a, a propagation uh, uh, by at the speed of the at the flow at the speed of the flow of the entropy wave so you see you have a, 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 a direct influence of the shock wave to the heat release the distribution of heat release through the entropy wave and the downstream running acoustic mode and you have an upstream running acoustic mode of that. but what you have to realize and this is not so easy is that this loop concern in fact every every point you have a loop for every point inside the distribution the distribution of it really so you have a continuous set of feedback loops so feedback loops uh, so i will i will sk skip the detail because uh, uh, what time i have uh, okay I have, I, I have to be back now and uh, stronger driven regime i will be back to the to the result okay here is maybe i can be back to the conclusion that's all ah that is uh, the two this this is the uh, analysis for the two limiting case that i have uh, 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 described but uh, i just want to give you the final results voilà general conclusion galloping detonations are due to a fa phase shape in the loop between the lead shock and the heat release controlled by the entropy wave and the upstream running mode. Uh, 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 and, and in strongly over in a strongly over detonation in the Newtonian limit, uh, these loops are fully controlled by the entropy wave. What does that mean? That the, the acoustic are faster, uh, the two acoustic are faster in, in the two, the upstream running and the downstream running faster. So, so the loop is limited by uh, the, uh, the, the slower uh, uh, propagation mechanism. And, and it is just the opposite uh, uh, for uh, 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 when you are close to the chapman jouguet uh, uh, regime, uh, where it, 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 for small heat release, the flow is transonic, you are close to the speed of sound everywhere, and the dominant mechanism in the loop is the upstream running acoustic wave. So, uh, and this this two limit but what is important is that uh, uh, let me show you the type of result we obtain we obtain uh, let me show you we obtain an integral equal oh, here it is. we obtain an integral equation for the reduced propagation velocity of the excuse me you know, this uh, dot a to is the uh, propagation velocity of the shock front. And you see it's, a, 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 it's an integral equation, linear, because we are looking uh, to, the, to the stability. So we have linearized everything with a delay. Okay. And the delay, and, and you have a, 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 a kernel here. Uh, uh, where the, where the thermal sensitivity is here and when the, where a stabilizing mechanism of residual compressible effects 
is here. So uh, now what you can, with this equation, you can find out uh, uh, the spectrum. Um, just I want to, okay. Okay, you know, <coughs> with, this is a type of, uh, a, the same type of equation, which is obtained in the opposite limit of strongly overdriven detonation. Yeah. Uh, uh, theta is the temperature of the Neumann. You can use theta or you can use the velocity is, is the same. And it turns out that now you have a, a, a for a given sensitivity here. This is B, the sensi thermal sensitivity uh, uh, of, uh, uh, of the reaction rate. You have an integral equation uh, uh, obtained for the uh, growth rate. And here is, is the typical <coughs> distribution uh, 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 growth rate for different frequencies. This is a discrete set of mode and you have a bifurcation at the finite uh, oscillator. It is what is called a Poincaré Andronov bifurcation in, in uh, U US. It's called <coughs> uh, off bifurcation, but uh, 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 and not only that, but it is possible to describe nonlinear effect and to describe completely the uh, dynamic of this uh, one-dimensional oscillation, uh, which is called galloping detonation. So it's now time to have a, a break of ten minutes, and I my last lecture in 10 minutes, okay? Okay, Professor. Okay. Okay, thank you. So, <clears throat> uh, uh, to finish uh, my series of lecture, uh, I, I have, uh, let's say, uh, 40, 40 minutes, something like that. Uh, and I cannot go into uh, details of uh, the different topics that I would like to present. So, for example, I skip I skip the topic of the of the stability of shock waves, uh, and I I I will uh, uh, consider first uh, 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 briefly the nonlinear di dynamics of shock waves and the uh, max 10 formation in pure shock waves. So uh, uh, <clears throat> what is a max 10? I just recall briefly what is a max 10. You, I do not give uh, uh, too much detail. A max 10, a max, uh, uh, a max 10 is essentially a, 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 a phenomena with three shocks, uh, which is created by the different, by, by, by by a singularity, by a, you know, by associated with two uh, 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 main shock, a secondary shock, and a slip line, and this is a well-known uh, problem for when an, uh, 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 the an incident shock is not perpendicular to the wall and so on. Okay, uh, <coughs> you know, uh, uh, say. Cellular structures have been observed uh, for detonation, and they can be this uh, can be uh, simply understood as the coupling of the longitudinal oscillation that I have described in uh, the uh, galloping detonation model. But not, but it uh, it's not necessary. It is not necessary that we are above the critical condition for, for the uh, galloping detonation. Even below, there is an oscillatory frequency, which is damped, naturally damped. But this is, is, uh, this, uh, is important. When it, even when it is damped, the loss, uh, there is a loss, longitudinal oscillation between the, uh, the uh, it really, the, uh, the reaction zone and the lead shock, uh, even if it is damped. And you have the transverse propagation 
wave that has been described by the linear stability analysis of shock waves that I've skipped because I have no time to discuss that. But this transverse velocity is, is what, you, what is easily simple to, to keep in mind is that it, it involves the uh, sound speed, in fact, in the compressed gas. Okay, you have a sound speed. So you have a, 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 a transverse, uh, you have transverse waves of wrinkle waves, uh, linear, that can be for And they, they, are, they can be coupled with uh, longitudinal oscillation. And this is going to form a max ten. And, uh, and, and this is going to explain uh, this coupling between the, these two coupling, uh, uh, transverse oscillation, longitudinal oscillation, uh, transverse oscillation of a pure shock, uh, a longitudinal oscillation <coughs> of, uh, 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 of a detonation, galloping, uh, galloping detonation, but even below the galloping threshold, uh, this could this explain simply the nonlinear uh, uh, structure of uh, uh, the, the of the cellular structure, uh, and the basic ingredients of uh, this uh, 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 cellular structure as are this uh, uh, max of trans mass stem in transverse direction. This is why it is in important to, to consider this max stem. Now, what we have realized recently, uh, or let's say not so, we, uh, not, not, uh, we, we, uh, we have realized that when, you, when a shock is reflected for, from a wavy wall, it produces a, 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 a triple max stem. Uh, looking uh, and structure looking very closely to uh, a cellular structure of detonation, which means that you know you do not need the reaction the reaction of detonation to, to have a cellular structure that looks like in a sense of the, the cellular structure of detonation. Uh, 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 and this this has been also uh, uh, confirmed by direct numerical simulation uh, by the group of uh, uh, Luc Vervich and uh, Lodato in Rouen. You see, you see the, the, the picture looks quite similar as, as well. So uh, here are uh, uh, different uh, 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 numerical results at different states of the uh, 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 shock reflected from the uh, wavy wall. And you see clearly the formation, uh, after a while, the formation of the singularity. You know, you know uh, here this is ring and this point, you form a singularity and this singularity as a transverse max stem, you know, crossing each other. All right. Uh, it, the multidimensional analysis of this problem has been performed uh, uh, and uh, first in the linear analysis, uh, working uh, in a different, uh, with different approximation. And the linear analysis ends up, linear analysis, to this wave transverse wave equation that I have just uh, done. Uh, uh, I have just uh, presented uh, in my first slide, you know, uh, you obtain this, this equation easily uh, by looking to the uh, linear dynamics. Uh, so you have this wave equation and now uh, 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 I have written here in order to, to clarify, you, you have the wave linear, still linear, that are produced by uh, the, the wrinkling of the front, you have a vorticity wave here and you have acoustic wave. Uh, <clears throat> so in, in certain limits, this problem has been 
analyze numerically in certain limits that I am going to, to skip. And uh, uh, what, what was, uh, I skipped the detail. And, and what is important is that we, I was able to, uh, 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 to handle, to perform a weekly nonlinear analysis of the problem. And I will skip the detail. And I will just want to go to the result. The result is here. You know, here is a linear, the linear uh, 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 wave propagating in the transverse direction. And this is a nonlinear term that is added to, to this coming from the nonlinear the nonlinear interaction, in fact, essentially coming from the uh, entropy wave. Uh, and uh, it, it turns out that this equation uh, is uh, can 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 be transformed in a Burgers equation, explaining the detail the formation of the cusp here that appear in cellular structures, and <laughs> and uh, uh, numerical simulation of this model. Uh, yield a good, very good comparison with experiments and DNS. So, uh, no, I will skip for uh, short vortex interaction. I, I will not talk about that uh, by using the same methods. Uh, and and the, I would like to close this uh, aspect of the problem by, the, by just the shock turbulence in the, by a model describing the shock turbulence and turbulence interaction. You, see, you consider a shock propagating in a turbulent uh, flow. And uh, finally, the equation we obtain uh, by, the, uh, by our asymptotic analysis, if you have a forcing term, and this forcing term is nothing else than an acceleration term coming from the uh, 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 turbulence intensity. U, U, delta U1F is the intensity of the turbulence. So uh, let's, uh, so we have performed a numerical result of this problem and it turns out a, a very interesting result is that when the, go, when the times, when the times develop, uh, the cellular structure that is uh, induced uh, by the turbulence uh, have a size growing in time. And uh, the characteristic cell size of the pattern at the shock front is uh, and become even more larger than the integral scale of the turbulence. And the question is, does that uh, size uh, 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 saturate with the time? And this is not clear because the numerics uh, are developed in, in finite, in, in books of finite size. Uh, uh, a comparison with DNS, you know, you have a DN, uh, model equation and DNS has been developed by uh, the Stanford group, uh, Larson and all. Not quantitatively description, but the, the Description is qualitatively interesting. Okay, now, now let me change uh, to, to the next topic. So this is the last topic I like to this to briefly present. Okay. This is topic is, is the cellular detonation. Because you know, uh, uh, it's clear that uh, 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 having a good method to solve the problem uh, uh, of cellular structure of pure shock and knowing the, dynam the dynamic of the longitudinal dynamics of detonation, it should be 
uh, possible to have a theory for the cellular structure of the detonation. Here is the, what I said already, that you have the coupling of this longitudinal uh, uh, wave equation of the pure shock and the longitudinal, uh, this is transverse, excuse me, I say maybe something wrong, uh, the coupling of the transverse, where are you? Transverse uh, linear wave on the shock and the oscillation. This coupling give is going to explain. Now, what, what I want to discuss with, to briefly present is a, a way uh, uh, to solve uh, analytically this problem. Uh, <coughs> this has been done, uh, in, uh, now it's uh, almost 20 years ago, eh? uh, at strong overdrive, uh, because at strong overdrive, uh, the, the Mach number uh, uh, of the shock is very strong, but the Mach number of the flow is very small. So that the flow is quasi, quasi isobaric behind. Uh, so I will not explain in detail uh, uh, the methods. <coughs> and, uh, and in addition of that, it, it has been found that uh, typically this detonation are unstable and that the stability limit it, 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 it works only for very small heat release. So the important analysis, the relevant analysis to perform is to perform a, 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 a weakly unstable detonation at strong overdrive. And weakly strong overdrive is give you this approximation that are in the first line here. And now if you look, uh, uh, in order to be stable, you, you need a very small heat release, okay? Uh, so this is not very, very realistic, which means that uh, your ordinary detonation are typically unstable. Okay, I skip, I skip the detail of the analysis. Uh, okay, I, I, I do not, I cannot go in details in the analysis. I just want uh, uh, to go to the, uh, the, the result. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> You know, the linear growth rate, for, to, to begin with, you are looking to uh, the stability analysis of this problem. And the, li the, the linear growth rate is, uh, 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 an equation for the linear growth rate is obtained, but uh, 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 this, this, uh, linear growth rate is, uh, its expression of this linear growth rate uh, is obtained I mean, uh, uh, by, uh, is exp the, excuse me, more clear, uh, let's say, the, this is a linear growth rate, this is a wave number, okay? So the linear growth, the linear growth rate uh, uh, divided by the, by the wave number is, uh, there, there are two terms. There is a quasi isobaric instability here, where we are with a kernel, uh, uh, with a, which is written here, and you have a stabilizing effect for the large wavelengths, uh, which is due to compressible effect. You know, the main instability come from uh, the uh, um, from the the quasi isobaric uh, uh, flow, which is co essentially controlled by the entropy vorticity wave, while the acoustic waves are going to stabilize uh, uh, the, the, the problem. And one has, one has, uh, one has been able to uh, draw, to find an analytical expression of at the transition and uh, the, the, um, the, excuse me, 
this the the expression of the growth rate in terms of the wave number at the bifurcation took in in in, in certain limit this shape where the transition is here. So now when you compare the numerics in straight line and the analytics, uh, the agreement is quite satisfactory, which means that the analytic uh, description is interesting. Now, what is more interesting is to develop a weekly nonlinear analysis. And in fact, uh, 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 this weekly nonlinear analysis was published, uh, uh, <coughs> let's say, 20 years ago. Eh? Uh, uh, you know, uh, al alpha uh, uh, y, where is, okay, okay, here. You know, the front, the expression, the, the, the detonation front, which is, in fact, this is the shock front. Uh, uh, of the detonation is, is alpha y is a transverse t is a time. The equation you obtain uh, is a mix is a mixture of the uh, two problems that I have just described. On the left hand side, you have the nonlinear equation for pure shock waves that describe the uh, equivalent of the max stem formation. Uh, 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 on this shock wave. And on the right hand side, you have, a, you have the, the linear growth rate of <coughs> uh, 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 the detonation. Uh, 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 here is a quasi isobaric instability. Uh, uh, and here is, a, is the uh, uh, stabilizing effect of the, of the large wavelengths due to the acoustic. And the nonlinear term, it, it turns out that in, in this expression, the nonlinear term that stabilize uh, the fluctuation, uh, <coughs> the, 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 the structure is the same as the one coming from the shock wave. You know, acoustic, the combustion is, you have only the linear part of the combustion here. This is, a surprise because usually what uh, uh, one think, thinks that uh, the nonlinear aspect of the uh, combustion rate is important. It turns out that in this limit it is not the case. And what what we did uh, uh, that we we uh, here is a linear growth rate that we have considered, which is obtained when this term is negligible, when we, you put everything in common, you find cellular structure with this classical, exactly what is the same shape as it is observed in experiment, qualitatively, because uh, you are far from, from the, uh, 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 we are far uh, from the condition of the experiment because we are at a week, a week Weak it lazy, release and so on, huh? and and, and uh, strongly overdriven, but nevertheless. But the main and this this is a range of unstable wavelength that you have a lot of unstable, and it turns out that the result of the nonlinear coupling is not only to stabilize uh, cellular structure, but when the time increase, this cellular structure are destabilized by these equations, just by uh, sol solving this nonlinear equation. And then restabilize again, but with a longer uh, uh, wavelengths. So uh, this, this, this nonlinear equation show that the most important, uh, the, the size, the size, excuse me, the size, the typical size, of a cellular detonation should be close to this point here, the marginal point of the the larger wavelengths. Okay, so this is this is uh, the interesting uh, 
result that uh, uh, in fact uh, the nonlinear dynamics of cellular detonations has tendency to increase uh, the size the size of the cells. Uh, uh, you see, because the, the, this, the discretization that you have here of these normal modes uh, depend on the width, the, the size of the tube. For a given size, you have many linear modes. You have the most unstable mode. It turns out that the nonlinear size is given is more given is more close to this to the longer unstable wavelength than to the most unstable wavelengths. So this is uh, <coughs> the conclusion for for. Uh, uh, and uh, even a more interesting conclusion is that the multidimensional instability, you know, the multidimensional instability, which is obtained uh, 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 occur before the instability developed by, uh, 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 by the pulsating one dimensional oscillation. So in a sense, what, what the conclusion of this uh, simple, not simple analysis, as analysis is complex, but simple equation is that the multidimensional instability appear before the galloping, the instability associated with the galloping detonation. And this is something that people know uh, experimentally. Uh, <coughs> So uh, the super, we have superposition of two mechanisms, the nonlinear dynamics of the lead shock and the linear oscillation due to the heat release. Uh, but this superposition leads to an instability uh, in cellular structure, even when, you, when the oscillation, uh, uh, when the uh, 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 longitudinal oscillations are stable. So when when the, there is no pulsation detonation. And the frequency of oscillation is uh, uh, simply related uh, to the characteristic time uh, of the reaction rate at the Neumann temperature. And the nonlinear wavelengths uh, in the limit we are working is uh, given by a simple expression uh, 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 built with Z, uh, uh, excuse me, built with uh, uh, the velocity at the Neumann state times the uh, multiplied by the time of the reaction at the Neumann state. This gives you a length. And when you divide this length by the Mach number. Uh, at, uh, 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 of the mean flow, which is a small number. So this lambda is larger, is going to be larger. This is a sickness of the detonation. And, and so the transverse wavelength is, is expected to be larger than the detonation sickness uh, by, uh, uh, by a factor which is the inverse of the Mach number, the local Mach number of the flow uh, 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 behind the shock, which is typically, this is 0.2, something like that. And it turns out that there is a number, a magic number that gets out from this, uh, from the nonlinear uh, effect with, uh, I have explained to you just before that you, that the size of the cell increase all the time. And this magic number that appear here is appear to be between two and five. So, in a, in a sense, uh, uh, this is the uh, main result that have been obtained by an asymptotic analysis of the cellular detonation. Uh, now, the same things has been developed for uh, condition near the CG. Uh, uh, but I will, uh, uh, in that case, the, as I told you, the longitudinal oscillation, the longitudinal dynamics 
is associated with an upward propagating acoustic wave, uh, upward, no, not upward, upstream, <laughs> with the upstream, uh, upstream running acoustic wave, as I explained to you already, while uh, uh, in, in, in the strongly overdriven regime, it was controlled by the entropy of acoustic. Uh, okay. Cellular instability in his uh, near also can be computed. That is, okay, uh, one has obtained a linear, uh, linear uh, uh, re dispersion relation, but uh, 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 the bifurcation scenario is similar to that of the strongly overdriven regime, but we, we, uh, uh, the integral equation are of the same type in the both limit uh, and, uh, and increasing the thermal sensitivity of the induction length or stiffening the distribution of heat release promotes the instability. This is the general conclusion. And detonation are unstable against the transverse dis dis disturbance before to become unstable uh, against the longitudinal ones. Uh, and Unstable wavelengths are typically larger than the detonation thickness. So I think that I will, uh, uh, I, uh, I finish my lecture on, on this slide and, and I thank you very much for your attention. Okay. So. Thank you, Professor. Thank you so very much. You, uh, you can uh, stop recording and uh, and if you have questions, let 